Kenya is a land of many heroes and martyrs. As a nation, we celebrate Mashuja Day every year to commemorate those who have played an important role in our land, but sometimes we do forget to highlight the stories of our heroes and experiences of their lives and what young generation and the entire world can learn from them. In Kenya, once lived and still lives a great man, a hero and a man of God. This is none other than Reverend Father John Anthony Kaiser, a non-spoken hero. He was known to be a powerful human rights defender. A Mary Hill priest born in Minnesota, United States of America. He came to Kenya in the year 1964, lived in Kisi Diocese, Sengera Parish, Gongo Diocese, Maela IDP Camp, in Naivasha and Kigoris, Logorian Parish in Narok. Sengera Parish in Kisi Diocese was the first place where Reverend Father John Anthony Kaiser lived for long after he arrived in Kenya. People who lived with him in Kisi witnessed his great work, which included building churches by himself. It was so amazing that he got to speak Kisi language better than even the people of the land and many Kenyans. He was a happy person, especially when he was celebrating Mass. And because he had stayed in Kisi for long, he was able to speak Kisi language like Kisi people. Even some proverbs in Kisi could speak better than me. The way he used to mingle with elders, he could record them, and by evening he could listen to songs and dialogue that he had been having with them, and he helped him to learn fast. Mostly, he used to read gospel in Kisi language than even Kiswahili. Many people knew Father Kaiser in many different ways, but what was amazing about him is that his character was unique and never changed after moving from place to place. Where he worked and lived in his time of service before he met his death. He was a priest of mercy, helping people who were handicapped. He will bring to me an old woman to tell me, Maria, take this mom, wash her, feed her, take good care of her until I come back. I remember another day, he brought to me another kissy old woman and told me, Maria, take care of this mom, wash her, feed her, I will come back to take her to hospital. We liked his way of life and he did not like who lies to him. He lived a simple and humble life. When he started building two rooms there, he said he was building for children physically handicapped. Even young generation at Sengra Parish can speak about Father Kaiser. We recognize Father Kaiser through history that he was a priest who fought for people's rights. He was a priest who helped the sick people, children, and we conquered many challenges in our community through his help. In our community. He is a former military of USA, and having faith and passion of his mission, Father Kaiser faced every situation with courage. Father Kaiser was a unique priest whom we have never seen because he had no boundaries in helping people of all denominations. He advocated for human rights by preaching unity and love, like when there were clashes between Maasai and the Kisi community. He always reminded us that we should be his family, for we belong to the same family, same father, and we should love one another and people learned from him, and he brought unity between the two communities. Father Kaiser was a cherished leader who feared no one, who dared those who cannot be dared. But the truth will always remain. 
Justice work is very hard work. You have to go talk to people, visit the places. The problem with justice, you need facts. I think it's very dangerous to be working for just without facts. You need facts and people don't have the time or don't take the time to get the facts. And Father Kaiser was doing that. After meeting many of his close friends, it is easy to know who Father Kaiser was. He's a man who wanted to confirm the truth before he make allegations. So when he made allegations against the government and against the police or other government offices, he had to confirm that, that is the truth. So that was an important attribute of Father Kaiser. The fact that he he never wanted to make any false allegation against anybody. He loved just nature. A, a good man, a simple man, able to mix anywhere. I think the truth drove, drove him, the truth. To get to the truth and justice for people. So he was ready to talk to anybody, face anybody, but politely, re respectfully always. And it was very, very respectful. Act justly, love tenderly, walk humbly with your God. These are all three things that Father Kaiser valued most. Father Kaiser was a man full of love for the poor. He was an a model for me for what a priest would be. He spoke with passion about his experiences in his parish, how key leaders in the country would utilize and exploit the ignorance of people in the community. He was a human rights defender. Father Kaiser had not left a word. He was a model of Jesus Christ. A Jesus who lived among us and walked with us. A Jesus who was concerned and cared about the poor. That was Kaiser. He was a very strong priest. He was, uh, he was courageous. Uh, he was a hardworking person. Uh, he was a man of humility. He was a very humble man. Uh, actually, like this church, he was almost building himself. Uh, he liked doing things in practice. He, when you do an activity, he is there, you are working together. So he was actually a very humble man. Uh, he led a simple life like a priest. So I may say, actually, besides uh, helping people, but he was also an example. In the year 1993, another part of Kenya was in trouble. A political conflict which affected people's rights. People were evicted from their lands. That is when victims decided to settle themselves as IDPs. The camp was big, men, women, and many children suffering of hunger and went this season. We are talking about Maela as a part of Mongo Diocese. Father John Anthony Kaiser, who was a priest in the same diocese, was sent to live with them as their chaplain. He fought for them daily and fed them. In 1993, and that's where my other camp is. So what happened in, in Gong Diocese, there were thousands of people evicted. About 30,000, they say, were evicted. Half of them went to any relative they could find in wherever they had come from 120 years ago. And the other half had nowhere to go because 20 years is a long way and some of them hadn't room and their relatives were too poor to take them. So Mayela was set up a camp around the outstation of the Catholic Church. And Father Kaiser, one of his duties as Catholic priest in Ngong was to visit Mayela and he was appointed chaplain there. I am an IDP from Enosubukia. That time in 1993, we were in trouble and we got help from Father Kaiser. He was a very nice white man. This place is called Mayela. We came here and we did not have money to rent houses here. We just decided to camp. We made shelters. If there is moon by night, it will be shame because from outside people could see how you have slept. 
Ilikuwa very shame. Sasa fala Kaisha ndio tulikaa naye kwa muda hapa. Tuseme ya kwamba ni mtu alikuwa anajulikana sana. We stayed long with Father John Anthony Kaiser here. They say that he was very much known here because he helped everybody without excluding non-Catholics. He helped all needs. He was just nice. Because he analyzed our situation and they realized that it was not normal and people were innocent. Then he was brought to help them and he did. If you go wrong, Kaiser would call you and show you that you have done a mistake. Kaiser was nice and he was dealing with human rights situation and at time of my government people were not allowed to speak the truth. If you try you were killed. So Kaiser was a human rights defender. The situation in Mayera brought on board other friends of Father Kaiser whom they shared the common concern which including fighting and standing for human rights. They all held their hands together to provide the humanitarian assistance to the IDPs in Mayela camp at that time. This situation bound them together as friends who witnessed a great relationship till his last day. Sister Nula assisted in distributing food and clothes to the IDP. And that's where I met him, really met him. I remember this priest on the top of the wall from 20 years earlier, but it was there that we really, we asked him could we come in and help the women. The women said they needed help in Mayela. And we went in as two sisters at a time and um, to see could we help the women because they had no food, they had no water, they were, they were very, very badly stuck. So about 18,000 people in a small camp stuck together at the side of a mountain. We shall never forget Sister Nula. I really appreciate her. She was helping us so much. We shall never forget her. She continued from where Father Kaiser achieved. Bundy Kadenj, the lawyer of Father Kaiser, did a lot of work on the case of Mayela. In 1994, December, the victims that he was helping had already left their farms. They had been evicted in Mayela and they had been taken for assistance, I believe, in Naivasha. There was a camp where all these victims were. And the first thing the government did was to demolish and to evict all those victims. And they were ferried to different areas in central province. We found that we had something in common, in that we had to look into ways and means of ending the violence. And after that, he came to my office many more times until the time of his death. And I recorded a lot of statements from him from the people that he brought to my office. Peter Kimeu, who was working for the Catholic Relief Services, donated food and other materials to the IDPs. When I was called for assistance, I went to Maela. And I went out not knowing who to meet. But in a shandy kind of an house where Father lived, and Father was with the people. So when I spoke to him, he gave me a brief of what had happened up in the mountains, and we went out to see. I could not believe my eyes to imagine Father Kaiser was in a position to leave with the refugees, people who had run away from home. And he was there. And I remember him telling me, Peter, this is the church of Jesus. Because I am with the people. And I have to be here. Sister Nula 
worked hand in hand with Father Kaiser to assist people in Maela IDP camp. And during August 2017 celebration of Father Kaiser anniversary, down in Naivasha Nakuru County, she shares how it was hectic during the time of intervention. We are in deep gratitude for those who risk their freedom and life for the rights of the poor and vulnerable of society. Open our eyes that we may see the needs of others and respond with charity. Open our ears that we may hear their cries and comfort them. Open our hearts so that they may not be without relief. Let us not be afraid to defend the weak and vulnerable. It would be very wonderful memories. I, when I look here, I think it's always stood to me the wonderful courage of the women who, in spite of the difficulties of trying to get food and trying to get mind their children, they still stayed cheerful and courageous. And for the men who were, they looked for any job they could find, mending shoes out of tires, anything that they could keep them alive. And I think the suffering, um, it made me value food. Though many families of IDPs decided to remain in the Maela Centre, only few people who were not even IDP got land at Moedabi, while others got nothing. The land of Moedabi was given to 214 people. There are even other Masais who fought us and were also taken there. Others were brought from Kericho, the Kalenjins, and they are also there. And the land was bought by UN for the victims who were at Malaya. Then we don't know the way forward. We were told the land was bought by UN, but today we don't know how it is going. Only God knows. If we talk about church, the Catholic Church has helped us so much. So much. Sana, sana, sana. Wale walipeleko hapa, Moidabi. Tulikuwa na hawa huko juu. Those ones taken to Moidabi who were together before, they were selected. Others were dealers of charcoal. Others working or visiting friends. Thus, they were selecting those who will not request anything from government later. These are the 214 people taken there. When they reached there, they became our enemies. Why do we love them? When we asked them how is going there, they were like, no, I don't want to speak about government. Maybe they were warned. And he's the person that you know. He doesn't want because he got a land that he did not deserve. But as who had the land, we were not given one. Among 215, maybe 10 only had land in order to cover the trick. Those who remained here, if you had the land, you were not lucky. We have lost many of them from that time, more than 400. We buried them in the public cemetery, but later the cemetery was also taken in 1996. We missed the way to go to bury our people. Unless you go to the people who have land and pay them little amounts, we are in trouble. Father Kaiser came as a savior of my IDPs. First, he provided a humanitarian assistance food and a cloth to IDPs. Second, he provided spiritual accompaniment and also did a human rights advocacy. Though they were all IDPs, still there were different cases of human rights violation and that was the duty of Father Kaiser. Father Kaiser, as we walked towards his uh, graveyard on the day of burial, I was part of the, the entourage that went all the way to Kisi. We went all the way to the place of his burial. I saw women walk and cry. 
like their hope was shattered. And I believed everything that was said in that particular time. Father Kaiser remains the best of the examples of what I would have of a priest. A priest who can die for his people. Born in the United States of America, he lived in Africa and lived in Kenya and lived for us. Families which remained at Maela are around 500. They were accommodated by local people, non-IDPs of Maela, and they started life from nothing. They struggle day to get meals, no means to educate children. Most he could he tried to help with. He was moved when Mayala, remember he, I said he was chaplain to Mayala camp, where there were about 18, maybe have gone down to 12, and then Christmas Eve, their people were scattered. There's still about 500 there after all these years. There's still about 500 ref, genuine refugees. That was a nightmare story because the government went in and they, they, inter they brought other people in and they gave them land and they gave a few people land. We never knew why some people got land, other people were just chased away. So it was a lot of injustice. I don't think you looked at, you, most of your, your heart went out to the people, those who got land, they got la a bit of land but nothing, built nothing on it. They had to pick up, put up a bit of few sticks and plastic bags and cardboard. Um, anything they could find. So most of it was keeping those people alive with food for the coming the coming month, year. We managed to get um, some gem base to dig with for the because they're mostly we think a lot of them were kikuyus. Um, they like digging. You know, they're people who are of the soil. They like planting. Um, we managed to get things for them to dig and we managed to get good quality seeds. People helped us with money, so we spent money on seeds. So, and other sisters came in, and friends came in. We'd, we organized some van loads. Even in my early days, we organized van loads of people in to help, to see where they could help. Every day, going far up the mountains of Enosbukia, to work in lands which they owned in the past, but were grabbed from them during the eviction period. We go very far in Nosobukia. We go to work in a land that has been grabbed from us. We pay for a season so that we can get food. Our children of that time, they did not study. Now they are grown up. Women and they go with rories. We don't see any support from government now. It is 25 years. But we are hoping the church will help us. By the love of God, even our current president, Hor Kenyatta, I know he is a Catholic. May he have pity of us. We are patient even today. We need to move from here so that our children can also improve their lives. Because we are IDPs. Our children are IDPs. Because they have nothing and we are in trouble. We need help. Natuko na shida. Watu saidie. Maisha yetu ya kila siku ina shida zaidi kuliko mjabu lingine lolote. Kwa sababu gani? Kwa sababu our daily life is hectic beyond any other problem. Why? Because since that time till now, the problem for us has been getting food and a renting room. You don't know where you get food. One will think you are working. You can get work, but it's still tricky. Why? Because you can go 8 morning and come back around 5 p.m. Even though we were given some food, it could not be enough. Yeah, it was good, but because they gave us for 5 months, so after we had to struggle, now our children are spoiled. That is why. You hear there are a lot of disease. Children and our people, in general, have gone through a lot until they die. Lack of symmetry, where to bury their people is so painful, since they have not even a single piece of land. Monica remembers that 
and fears to cry. We don't have cemetery. Even a small piece we don't. When our people pass on, nowhere to bury them. What can we do? In which Kenya are we? We are so much in sorrow. And we shall never forget Father Kaiser. He is a saint and he will remain a saint. We shall never forget the Catholic Church because they helped us so much. And we have faith that his issue was followed up by the church. Priests led by God, we have hope that even our president Uhuru, since he is a Christian Catholic, we hope he will have pity of us and help us to move from here. We have a serious problem. There is no way we can stay somewhere and we lack even cemetery. It is our right to have where we can bury our people and we thank so much the church as well as Father Kaiser. May God bless him abundantly. On 24th December 1994, when Domaela camp was destroyed, Father Kaiser risked his life also. There was a camp where all these victims were. And the first thing the government did was to demolish and to evict all those victims. So that, I think, was the first physical threat because he was actually physically assaulted by the police. He had also many threats during his work. There were also people following him. There were people visiting his house, in the, his, his house in Kyukoris, and making threat. He was very creative in his way, and uncourageous, unafraid, well, <laughs> courageous, yes. The government of that time was wrong.
PMC, students of primary and secondary schools, as well as adults. Faragiba Sepayang, the Logurian parish priest, introduces us to the parish. <laughs> especially with the young people and the young children. And right now, according to the census conducted recently, we have about 1,500 Catholics in, this, in all these stations. Since Father Kaisa left us 18 years ago, we have had several priests working here. The priests who have been in charge here after Kaisa are for up the fifth one. If Father Kaisa memory is still fresh in this area, in this parish. There are many stories which are told about Father Kaisa. One thing, Father Kaisa is buried here. And so every day, Every morning we go to church, every day we walk around the parish, we encounter Father Kaiser. It's not only his body that is lying in this parish, but also his spirit is lying in this parish. We also encounter his activities here. What he did before, it is still alive. You go to many schools, we have schools, this school was established after Father Kaiser. He built this school. As a matter of fact, we have one dormitory which was built by Father Kaiser. It is named after him. You go to a church, you are told, Father Kaiser built this church. So every corner you go in this parish, you are told Father Kaiser did this or that. Again, we also have a living memory of Father Kaiser here. Uh, in the name of Father John Anton Kaiser Memorial School. So this one is to serve as a, a, a memory, a memorial that we will remember Father Kaiser all through the life of this parish. As you realize, we have a, a big generation in this parish which did not encounter Father pa Kaiser in person, but they know about him, even some of them are, are named after him. So uh, really, Father Kaiser lives in this parish. His body, his remains are here, and his spirit is here. This is the shrine of Father John Anthony Kaiser. He's buried just in front of the main entrance of the church that he built with his own hands. His shrine, being in front of the church, has created a strong connection between Father Kaiser and the people of Logoria. 
our connection is also strengthened by the memories and souvenirs. Listening to people, you can feel that Father Kaiser did a lot to them and he's still alive in their hearts. I know Father Kaiser is a great friend of mine. He assists me so much since my husband died in 1990. I was left with five children. Father Kaiser assists me regularly with food and paid education for my second child from Form 1. When he died, I cried so much and I asked God to receive him in the right place. When I heard the bad news, it was on Thursday, I cried and there was nothing I could do, but he helped me. I thank him. Where he is, may he rest in peace. Kwa majina ni Eunice Debot. Mkaaji wa hapa Lorgoyan. Na mtambua Father Kaisa kama padri kwa hii parishi yetu. Nilimjua Father Kaisa mapema nikiwa na miaka 22. I met Father Kaisa when I was 22 years old. I had gotten my first child. My child got a sickness that we tried treatment and in vain. The child could not walk before, but after he could not walk again, Father Kaiser proposed to take my child together with other three families. For others, the problem was found and were treated quickly, but my case seemed to be complicated at Kilgori's Mission Hospital. Father Kaiser then took us at Tabaka Hospital in Kisi. It is there where the sickness was found. It was bruiseless, which was not yet known at our era. Then he was treated there. Father Kaiser took the burden fully. Now my son is a grown up. He is at the age of getting married. He has a job. You can't know that he was once physically challenged. All that Father Kaiser did to me, I will never forget him. Father Kaiser was the father who cared about people's life and security. Even though we could come back at night, he would buy for us sugar. He will take us safely home. He will ask, are you already in the house? He would push the door and confirm that you have locked well. That is where he could enter in his car and go back. He really cared about. He was a nice person who cared without boundaries. We have never experienced any challenge with him. He fed us like his children. He lived a simple life. He had a pickup truck that he used. Um, one of those, it's a double cabin, is it? There's room for people in the front, there's room for people in the back, and then there's an open space. So once when I visited him in Lalgorian, he'd always He'd get a van full of people. When he was going into town, people would be stopping on the way for a lift. But he lived a very simple life um, and shared. I think he helped a lot of people, but he never talked about that. He helped where he could, yeah. I think he'd sympathy for people who are, had no school fees, who are suffering, hadn't got enough food to put on the table. And he loved nature. At that stage, Kilgoris, where he was, the Algorian area, was full of wild animals. The parish priest confirms also that strong connection with Father Kaiser. Father Kaiser did these things devotedly. One, he evangelized the people here. He went to the, to the villages, he taught faith, he baptized people, he taught the... Again, he established schools, supported some uh, individuals in those schools, some of them paying for school fees. He could also assist people, uh, the poor people who cannot afford. And most importantly, he came to aid of, uh, of people, especially those who are marginalized, those who are oppressed. He fought especially 
this uh, idea of uh, early pregnancies and the FGM. He championed all those things, the rights of children. People in Logorian were able to categorize areas of the Kaiser's intervention. Mimi naito Simon Odoyo Jaramba, Mkaji ya Logoria, Catholic Parish. Father Kaisa, alipo kuja hapa, alipo kuta hapa. First, he was helping people. Second, he was helping people with disabilities, paying their treatment, and today they are fine. He also built churches at different areas of Logoria. Later, he started advocating for human rights. People who were arrested at Logorian, Father Kaiser could go to ask for them to be released. He did a lot in schools. He was dealing with girls' issues, human rights in general. At Logorian, he formed here a group named CJPC, Catholic Justice Peace Commission. Justice and Peace Commission. It's true. Pope says he wants witnesses. Father Kaiser was a true witness because of his intervention even during clashes. He confronted government officials, politicians, and told them the truth. And not only here, but every place where his humanitarian assistance was needed. He fought for people's rights, especially children. He did a lot because up to now, we have never seen another witness like him. He brought peace and light to us all. We will remember him for the great work he did. We went to Logorian on Mashuja Day when Kenyans celebrate Heroes Day. In the parish, they were celebrating it coincidentally with Mission Sunday. So amazing. Father John Anthony Kaiser is both a missionary and a hero. In the homily of the day, Father Gibbert reminds Christians how missionaries came to us and suffered while they were teaching us gospel. He links his preaching to the work of Father John Anthony Kaiser on human rights, social injustice, community conflicts, and the issue of early marriage, which is still a burning issue in that area. The spirit of Father John Anthony Kaiser has gotten a stronghold in Logorian. We call this place his home because it was the last place he was to say. In fact, I remember in various sermons, he used to be like he was preparing us that he's very soon going to go. Okay, we did not know that he's going to go the way he went, but we knew that he's going to go by way of retiring because he used to tell us I'm an age man now, uh, my years of service is coming to an end and very soon I'm going to leave you. So basically, uh, those are the issues that make us to say that, well, if it were not for his death, this was the last place he's going to, to be place working as a priest according to his words. Through some projects of building schools, mentoring children, helping poor families, assisting children born with some disabilities, the name of Father John Anthony Kaiser has been chosen by many families. Today, in Logorian, more than 150 children are named after John Anthony Kaiser. Now, um, when, he, when he was killed, um, there was a, 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 a policeman, a scary kind of a more of a watchman. He named his child. His, his child, his wife was pregnant at the time. He named her John Kaiser. Okay, and we decided when his brother came to visit about a few years later, we said, "Would it be nice 
to have the few children in KC that were named after him or wherever we found them. So we knew this Paul Bolo had named his child after him. So when we asked the catechist and the, the church person um, in Algorian, but we found not only, we said, would there be 20? He said, oh yeah, yeah, more than 20. Would there be 40? Oh yeah, more than 40. Six. We found out there was 150 children in one area ca called after him. Now they were called John or John Kaiser or John Ant. And that one of them, I asked him, oh, what's your name? A little to you. What's your name? My name is Father John Anthony Kaiser. So I was laughing, <laughs> but they were called. And I was talking to a lady in the clinic and she said, that's only the Catholic ones. There's many Protestants have, so the Protestant are named. So I think people, they, they were very grateful to him for his help, for, for trying, looking after his case. But there were many, many children, yes, called after him. We still meet them today. So we had a mass, we called, invited some of them for a special mass some years later. Um, so we had a big crowd of them coming, especially from Lalgoria near. In a group of kids, you are likely to find many Kaisers among them. We just stood aside and called the name of Kaiser. Immediately, this guy responded. I'm Brian Kaiser Mutoro. I study at Father John Anthony Kaiser School. I'm 12 years old. I'm happy to have been named Kaiser. And I'm putting effort to be like Father Kaiser. I hear Father Kaiser helped the less fortunate and he stood for the voiceless. And I want when I grow up to do the same and I encourage other youngsters like me to be like him and follow in his footsteps for his own role model. The parish is also playing a key role in keeping the legacy of Father Kaiser. Here is the main choir of the parish which has composed and recorded a song for Father John Anthony Kaiser. <laughs> The first thing Father Kaiser did when he arrived at Logorian was to build a church. And like Nikisi, people will always admire how he built churches alone. Only a few people, majority being women, could join him for support. <laughs> marehemu father kaiser ambaye tunajua alifanya kazi nzuri sana katika sehemu hii na wakristo wa katoliki kwa sababu wameweza kufanya kazi nzuri kwa miaka mingi katika sehemu ya hii ya Lokoria mpaka Ngata Barigoi na sehemu ya Tazmara kwa jumla he built this logorian church and told christian that it will be used only for 20 years and after 20 years, Christians will have to build a new church. The church that we are using at the moment has given us a promise that this church will keep you for 20 years. We have that, we are now in that church for around 23 years. That's why we have remembered to contribute so that we build a church that can, uh, can accommodate up to 2,000 people. 
When he started to build that church, he built that church when people are still few. Now we have called, we are now congested in that church. That's why we have taken a, a, a step to build a church that can accommodate that number of people. Because his promise was to, to keep us for 20 years, that church that he has built to keep us 20 years. The project of a new church has been the dream of Father Kaisa. This he built himself and he said to last for 20 years, meaning if he lived to that, then he could, if he was here today, he could have started a new church. Now, the members are trying to live strictly to the dream and to the words of Father Kaiser. We have, uh, we, we are endeavoring to build a new church, a new church that can accommodate around 1,200 people. Already we have got so many members, so many schools coming here, and so many times they don't fit in the church, they don't fit, and so we have a need it, we, we are not only building it because Father Kaiser said, yes, it was his dream, but I'm sure he has, his vision was that the numbers of this of the Christians here will have grown. Okay, and so they will not fit into that party, into that church, and again, that church will, will not be safe for people inside because of fear of collapse. And so we have decided as a community, as a church, to start this project. Gorian, a place where Father John Anthony Kaiser is alive in people's hearts. Down in the villages of Logorian, some families witnessed the goods that Father John Anthony Kaiser did to them. David Kataka was born with a physical handicap of legs and Father Kaiser helped him. Today he is a handsome boy of 18 years, almost finishing his high school. My name is David Lakakeng Kataka. I'm from Kataka family. I'm 18 years by now. I'm in Rio Kindo High School. I'm going to Form 2. I studied in my primary in Father John and Kaiser. From the story I heard that I was born lame, Although me, I did not accept that because I came to get senses when I'm right, I'm okay, can do everything that other people can do. So I heard that Father John Anthony Kaisa is the one who have done for me operation and I became like other people and I thank Father John Anthony for, for doing that good job. And the thing only they want to hurt you guys, let's only be ready to help the needy. And let's not see people the way they are suffering and we leave them. When Father John Anthony make me to be like other people, now I can do, I can almost play all games. I like ball. But I cannot play like this. I always wear sport shoes. I need strong shoes that I can use. That is the game I like most. I like football. And I can, I can walk long distance, but sometimes when it is very cold, I feel this. Some of the, they are not unfit. They are not feeling well. When, when I walk like this, and I listen something pinching me from down like this. Most of most of this like this. I can do like this, but this one cannot. So it is somehow I have one leg, but in both I can do. I can play with all. In this society, people live in a humble family. If I was an MCA, I can just make my society to get everything that they need them to be done. Father Kaiser 
He's a legend, man. He's fun. We won't forget him. If Father Kaiser was not there, he would, could have just here because he, he couldn't be able to work. He couldn't even go to, to school because here the schools are far. We will remember Father Kaiser. We can't speak about Father Kaiser in Kenya and forget Minnesota where he came from. The shrine of Father Kaiser makes them to own this man of God and feel the absence of relationship between Logorian and Minnesota. It is true, Father Kaiser came from Minnesota. He was sent here in 1964 in Kenya, came to Kenya in 1964, worked here, but he remained the son of Minnesota. The relatives are there. Everyone is there. I want to believe that this is the right time that we establish friendship between Lorgorian Parish and Minnesota. We wish those who are concerned, the family, where Father Kaiser come from, to remember uh, that Father Kaiser has done a lot in this community of the Maasai of Lord Gorian. He has done a lot, he has helped the, the, the needy people, who, the poor and the lame people. He has built schools, he has built churches, and uh, people who are related to Father Kaiser, we wish them a nice time and we wish them to remember us when we are in this community. Father Kaiser died because of because of us, because of what he has been doing to us. He died purposely because of that. Logorian, deep down in Maasai land, the issues that Father Kaiser had been handling are still there. And Father Gibar Sepayan does his best, but needs support to deal with issues of education for children, care for poor families, assisting children born with physical disabilities, solving inter-communities conflicts, and particularly, forced early marriage, which is still at high level. I've encountered those people. I've gone there for humanitarian assistance. I've gone there to console people. We have gone there to, to rescue people who have given out for marriages. So I, th I think this is how uh, we need to come and learn from that spirit of Father Kaiser in order uh, the best way even to remember him is to perpetuate these dreams and the work that he under undertook with this parish and especially that one. I can assure you we need even as many people, courageous people, to face these realities. Father Kaiser died on 24 August 2000, and in 2020, 20 years will be over. What is amazing is how the Christians of Logorian are working to honor that word of Father Kaiser. Building a new church and entering a new church will be a coincidence with the celebrating Father Kaiser 20 years anniversary. It will be a point of reference for Father Kaiser because Father Kaiser lives in this parish, both body and spirit. Uh, I would like to appeal that this, the 20th anniversary of Father Kaiser, to be celebrated in Old Korean parish. I will strongly and passionately appeal that they bring these celebrations, the national celebrations, because they are conducted every year. So national celebrations to be conducted in Old Korean parish during the, the 20th anniversary. Uh, secondly, we would like to invite his family from Minnesota. We would like to invite the parish, Minnesota parish, and the friends of Father John Anton Kaiser. We would like to invite them in this parish so that we may celebrate the 20th anniversary. Naivasha, the 
scene of crime. This is the place where Father John Anton Kaiser lost his life. Father Kaiser knew that he was at risk. Although many people attest that Father Kaiser was never afraid, but the question is, was he ever once afraid? Like, some people said he was never afraid. No, he was afraid. He was afraid. Um, I, one day, I think that's what helped me when he was when he was murdered some years later. I think it was him sharing with me one day, he called to see me in Nairobi after he had been moved to Western Kenya and he said, you know, I'm afraid I'll be killed if I keep going on this. And he, I said, well, why do you? And he said, well, there's so many people have suffered and so many people have left their land, lost their land. And I, I don't think I can stay and watch this. So I have to keep going. So, but I am afraid. So I think it's not. That, I think courage can be when you're most afraid. And he had the courage to keep going, even though he knew he most likely would be killed. Helping the poor was his pastoral work, and building churches was no problem. But sometimes, the politics forget that Catholic social thought does not exclude social justice, peace, and human rights. It is the case of Maela sexual harassment done to younger ladies among other cases of human rights violation which made the regime on the power during the time to be agitated. Some even attributed his work to someone even saying he was a CIA agent and all those speculation. So there were the real threats. It's true, Father Kaiser had premonitions that he might be killed. It's very interesting, he even almost knew how he was going to be killed. Because when he's talking, if I die, and I say those are his own words in that book, he also gave a background of what he expected. He was referring to the case of suicide of the late minister, how he was killed, and misrepresentation of Abed that he killed himself. So was Jury Ward. And this was a kind of a thread that a number of people who criticized the government will die and they all would be affected suicide. He was warned in Swahili words, if you don't give up with these cases, Utaona Moto, you will see fire. He knew that in time he will be killed, and his response was, if I die, let the people be given their rights. He had also many threats during his work. Some of those are also documented in this book. One of the things that uh, also was very critical is that he had a direct threat that he would be killed. And that was by a note written and sent to him uh, in Swahili written Utaonamoto. Utaonamoto has also formed the title of another book written after his death by an American journalist. It's called You See Fire. So if you read You See Fire, you see all those threats that Father Kaiser faced because they, they were part and parcel of the evidence presented during the inquest. So they, it is very important for people to know that the threat to Father Kaiser were real. We are on 24th August 2000, on his way, driving alone from Nairobi at Naivasha along Naku Highway, Father Kaiser was murdered found shot at the back of his head. A sad news to Catholic family in Kenya. Human rights defenders, his friends and his family and at large Kenyan community.
So he demanded to know the truth and nothing but the truth. University students this time round, mourning Father John Anthony Kesa. They walked along Parliament Road, Harambe Avenue, pointing an accusing finger at some senior government officials. And let me tell you, eh, this is the blood which has been sucked by a vampire because it's the blood of an innocent man. About his death, FBI was sent to investigate, aiming to confirm that Father Kaiser committed suicide. But people of goodwill will never accept that he killed himself. Looking at the position and the situation his body was found, it is impossible to believe that. Furthermore, why could Kaiser drive all the way from Logorian to Nairobi and from Nairobi to go and commit suicide at Naivasha? After visiting different friends of Father Kaiser, we found that he loved life and he saved life. The big question was, why could he kill himself? But still people need to know, who killed Father Kaiser? Father Kaiser? Father Kaiser had a great vision for Logorian, and because his death was forced, we as Logorian people want to know who killed him, why he or she killed him, how he or she benefited after killing him, and why didn't he or she take the place of Father Kaiser, and do the great work which Father Kaiser was doing. God will judge and put him or her in the rightful place, but we request to know the truth about Father Kaiser. On Akur Highway, exactly in Naivasha, you will see the scene of crime where Father Kaiser was murdered. There is a red cross and a monument built by Kenya Catholic Conference of Bishops. At Mayela, you can find a small house where Father Kaiser was living. Going to Logorian, where he met many friends and helped many people. There you find his shrine, schools that he built, many youths named after Kaiser, many families he helped, and many young people that he helped in their treatment of their physical disabilities. Some materials that he used are still there. Father John Anthony Kaiser came to Kenya as missionary, believed his priests, taught his prophets, acted as a hero, and died as a messiah. People will always remember him by his mercy, compassion, generosity, hard work, children, friends, a human rights defender. People know him to be a saint. One can forget the words of Father Kaiser, but cannot forget his statements. If I die, let the people be given their rights. There's a book Father Kaiser wrote himself called If I Die. Simple book, very well written, and some photographs in the, that even from his childhood. When you read the book of Father Kaiser, which interests me most, If I Die, let it be, but let the poor people or the people be given their rights. His souvenirs of Father Kaiser, there are many friends who lived and worked with him, who can speak about him. We need to start processing Father Kaiser and many other missionaries as saints. Furthermore, Sister Leonora, who was a great friend also of Father Kaiser, a consolata sister, is already the process has already begun to make her a blessed. Why not Kaiser also, who did so many good work to the church and for the good of the people? Well, definitely, I feel when I see the Leonella's coffin up there, I definitely feel we should be with the definitely it should be Kaiser. Yeah, he was a remarkable man. He was he was kind of honest. He's, what it was a saint, really, somebody committed to remark. I think at the beginning I never they used to talk about it, but gosh, when you know somebody, gosh, now I think I know a few people who 
Karen in the Tunga is going up for the canonization. Mother Teresa of Calcutta, and we knew her, I knew her. Uh, um, then, what, Leonella, we knew her. There's a few people I knew. Gosh, I, I thought saints were somebody miles away or in Rome or somewhere. I never knew, I never knew, know anybody. But we know people who are saints now, who've been up for canonization, yeah.